Today we are here with the items in Old School RuneScape that I think can make you into a main account. So, I am currently on a level 85 combat account called Need Bonds, where I've turned it into a free-to-play account, into a self-sustaining member's account, and lately I've kind of been getting into the med-level game. You know, at 85 combat, I really feel like I'm starting to get there, but I know that there's a different threshold of higher tier... PVMing and just RuneScape content that I'm not at yet. So today I'm going to go through all of the items that I think will get me there and items that I would recommend you guys to try to put your sights on in an attempt to become a main account. Many of these items either have stats, quests, or just activities that they're locked behind that will require you to play more of the game and experience a lot of what RuneScape has to offer. Which means at the end, if you've achieved all these items, really I think you kind of culminated a real good RuneScape experience and you have a solid main account going forward that can do a lot of end game content. So that's the idea behind the video. It's gonna be a lot more PVMing focused, more so than skilling, since skilling's just really individual and I don't think there's a lot of skilling items that are universally needed, although I do have one. So let's get into it. So with this list being in no particular order, we will start with what I think is one of the biggest achievements to get on an account, and that is Barrow's Gloves. The reason that Barrow's Gloves are useful is because it's a best in slot melee slash range item that you can unlock through a quest called Recipe for Disaster. These gloves will be gloves that you use all the time throughout almost any combat that you do, melee and range based, and ultimately you only have to pay 100k every time you want to to obtain a pair of these gloves, meaning that you can use them in the wilderness if you want to, and really they're just versatile as can be. And to be able to unlock it through questing is something that really isn't mirrored a lot in the game. So to get an item like that while also saving yourself money is very important. Now you do get this through the Recipe for Disaster quest, which needs 175 quest points to be completed, so it is a fairly difficult feat to get to, and that's why I think it's a good achievement. And ultimately, I think anyone can train combat in Old School RuneScape. You know, I can go to Sand Crabs and sit there and AFK combat until the day ends, but to really be invested into your account and to make it a main, you have to do those small side things that are really going to boost your overall experience, and Barrow's Gloves are a key example of what that means. So next up, we have the Fire Cape Yet again, a very, very good melee-based item to unlock in Old School RuneScape. It is the best in slot melee cape that you can unlock until you complete the Inferno, which is even a greater feat in and of itself, and that is absolutely late game. So you'll be using the fire cape throughout most of your melee-based grinds, and most other capes are fairly useless in the realm of combat, so this is a rare cape in that regard. Also with the Barrow's Gloves as well, this is an untradeable item, which means as long as you don't travel too far into the wilderness, you can take it out there, die with it on death, and pay to have it fixed for you, so it's something that you can kind of use out there as well. What you need to be able to do to get this cape is you need... In my experience, 75 range and 70 defense to kill Jad. Jad is actually a boss that lies at the end of a 60 plus wave endeavor where you will absolutely be tested. I mean, if you know what you're doing in the fight caves, it's definitely not something that is too hard. However, for inexperienced players or players that have never killed Jad before, it is quite a difficult task and I personally found it to be quite a hard one as well in my early times trying. And I think this cape deserves to be on the list because one, it is just an upgrade that will enhance your PVMing experience and two, it also shows people that you are a competent PVM or that you can kill Jad, you know? To some of the elites, you know, that might not seem like anything, but to some med-level accounts, you know, it's, it's definitely something that's respectable. Next up, staying in the theme of the melee gear, we have the Fighter Torso, which is a great melee torso up until the point that you can afford a Bando's Chestplate. Bando's Chestplate currently resides at about 21 mil, so that is a pretty hefty price point. And the Fighter Torso can be unlocked through Barbarian Assault, which is a mini game. The Fighter Torso, as well with the Fire Cape and Barrow's Gloves, is also another untradeable item, which means that you can use it in the wilderness freely up until level 30. And to obtain this item, you have to get 375 points in all of the rolls of Barbarian Assault, along with killing the Queen as well. Ultimately, this can be a task that lies anywhere from 45 minutes to 3 to 6 hours if you get a really, really bad team. At the end of the day, I think it deserves to be on this list because it's a necessary upgrade if you're trying to save yourself 21 mil. You know, if, you, if you're a med level that has an absolute ton of cash, maybe through some sketchy ways, then... Who needs a fighter torso? But if you're absolutely trying to grind your way to the top, it's going to be something you want to get. Now on to the Slayer Mask. We have the first real uh, part of Slayer in here, which is a combat-based skill. The real reason you want a Slayer Mask is because you get a significant boost when using it. When on a Slayer task, your melee bonus is 16.6%. And if you get it imbued on a task, you also get 15% range and magic bonus. 
In addition to that, you also have the added help of having some important Slayer pieces that are combined within the Slayer Helmet that can help you out a little bit. And to obtain the Slayer Helm, you're going to need 400 Slayer Points and 55 crafting, but then to imbue it, you're going to need 1.25 million Nightmare Zone points. Now that may sound like a lot, but it really isn't that bad. In Nightmare Zone, you can definitely AFK. So I really do think everyone should go out and try to get a Slayer Mask imbued because it allows you to diversify how you train Slayer. You can do range or mage if you want to, and that is a huge help. And along with that, having a black mask is going to definitely help your melee slayer as well and ultimately it's one of the biggest dps upgrades you can get in combat so definitely aim to do it if you plan on doing a good bit of slayer now next up we have the rune pouch i will say it's one that's not as big of a deal you know you don't have to have a rune pouch but i'm definitely going to be doing it because the rune pouch allows you to save inventory space while holding runes basically you can hold three runes up to sixteen thousand runes a pop in the rune pouch and ultimately it does save two inventory spaces most of the time whenever you need to use your runes. It's helpful in that regard for money making and PVMing and you'll use it well on into your account training. You know it's something you'll need forever. And ultimately it's an easy item to obtain. You can either get it through a slayer purchase of 1250 total points which is quite a bit in regards to Slayer. Or you can pay 1.2 mil Bounty Hunter points, which if you just purchase emblems through the GE is maybe 3 mil. It's not that much of a purchase, and since you can do it instantaneously, it's not going to take a whole lot of time, obviously. Ultimately, I think there's a ton of scenarios where it's useful, it's very easy to get, and it doesn't cost a ton, so if you are going into the realm of becoming a main account, I'd say it's worth a buy. So next up we have the Void set. This can be obtained through Pest Control, which is a mini game. And to obtain the full thing, really, there is the top, the bottom, the gloves, and then you have three different helms for each different combat style. Ultimately, all of the sets are aimed to boost your DPS when attacking monsters. And if you're not in a Slayer task and you're somewhat high level, oftentimes you can find that these are going to help you out the most, especially in scenarios where you don't really care too much about your defense. In the late game, a lot of different bosses actually have void as the preferred method when killing them and also in early game it is an armor that won't cost you anything that can also improve your dps the six pieces total can be bought for 1250 pest control points and it is a decent amount of time that you have to spend on it so i will say it is a bit of a grind but it's an absolutely must get this armor is going to be useful for you at some of the lower levels but definitely towards the higher levels and once you start to get into bossing it is going to be helpful to not have to switch all of your gear because with void you only have to switch helmets to switch combat styles instead of switching everything at once so the next set coming into the list is the full graceful set this can be obtained through doing agility the set itself has negative weight so it allows you to carry more on yourself without being as heavy but in addition to that whenever you are not running or you're idle you will gain run energy at a 30 percent increase which is definitely helpful in being able to move faster around the game and you'll need about 260 marks of grace to be able to obtain it and as you'll come to find there are a ton of skills where this is going to be useful i mean everything from farming to rune crafting to questing really just anything where you can see yourself moving about the game at a constant pace that you have to use stamina for you'll also see yourself probably running some graceful with it so it is something that you have to get out of the way and agility is a useful skill anyway, so if you can aim to get graceful, by the time you get graceful, you'll be pretty high up there, and most of the other agility goals you'll have to hit will be nearby. So next, looking at the Imbued God Cape. This is the cape that is best in slot for magic in any way that you're going to do mage for the most part. It gives you a significant boost over the Mage Arena 1 cape. And to be able to unlock it, basically you have to complete the Mage Arena 2 mini quest along with having 75 magic. Now, mage doesn't have a lot of untradeables in it like melee does. Melee, almost half of your gear can be untradeables, but mage is not like that at all. And the Mage Arena 2 cape is really the top tier of what you can unlock in regards to untradeables with magic. So so if you can aim for that, you definitely are at a point where you should have a lot of the other stuff kind of falling into place. And then lastly, we have Imbued Rings. Now, this is going to be one that really is a little bit more different. There are various amounts of rings that you can imbue through the Nightmare Zone shop. However, I'll just be going through the ones I like. The real ones that I would recommend are the Archer's Ring and the Berserker Ring because range is very heavily affected by your bonuses along with melee as well. And with melee, your accuracy doesn't matter much. It's really your strength bonus, which is why the Zerker Ring is more of the preferred one. The Seer's Ring is one that you really don't have to get necessarily because a ton of monsters have extremely low defense against Mage, so you hit a lot of the time. Meaning that oftentimes your Seer's Ring really isn't even that effective, but if you want to get it, you definitely can. And ultimately, it's not really hard to obtain these items. You get them through Nightmare Zone at 650k a pop, and then you have to pay how much they cost, you know, out of pocket. Like, Berserker Ring and Archer Ring isn't going to 
gonna run you dry on money but if you start to get up there where you have you know a 20 to 50 mil bank you can start spending a few mil on some rings it's not that big of a deal especially when you can always sell them back and ultimately if you have a good sustainable amount of money these should be things that just sit in your bank forever that's gonna be it for me and my newbie self I'm gonna get back on to fishing if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like if you have anything you want to tell me or if you guys want to see me do this video in the form of quests and skills to get completed let me know in a comment down below and in addition to that if you like the content make sure to subscribe for more with that said though hopefully you guys do have a wonderful day and uh, uh...